G'day folks, and welcome back to the channel for another meme build video. I say meme build because that's how it started, but that's not how it ended. This is my cold converted dual wielding primal strike trickster. As I said, the build started out as a bit of a meme build, as a lot of conduit based builds do, but ended up as one of the highest DPS builds I've made, with really good clear and excellent single target damage. The defense is good, though I wouldn't call this a tanky build. You won't be face tanking celestials with this, but it's not a glass cannon either. I leveled this as a two-handed lightning primal strike shaman, using very little from the nightblade other than pneumatic burst and shadow strike. You could also level as a cold dual wielding savagery build, focusing more on the nightblade half. Either would work, but this is a level 100 build that only works when you equip the gear for it. I put this together with gear that I mostly had in my stash, and it does have some rarer items that you would be better off farming with an existing character rather than trying to get them with a leveling trickster build. You could certainly level this on a fresh start with no help and end up at this point, but I wouldn't recommend it. So, now that I've turned most of you off of this build, and once the Logorian dies, let's get into it. A few notes on the items before we get into specifics. These items are endgame items, rare or difficult to get, and will require a lot of farming. I will suggest some alternatives for the rarer or harder to farm items, but these items should be the goal, and you should not expect similar performance with any substituted items. This build uses several items for conversion, so when substituting, if you choose to do so, make sure you are not converting your damage away to aether damage or something like that. Any item substitution will leave you with holes in the build, you will have to juggle augments to fill resistance holes, and the build will be less effective overall. So with that said, onto the gear. We're using exactly one set, and it's possibly one of the hardest to put together sets in the game, in spite of it being only two items. It is the Dread Sigils of Alchemos. These are cold-themed rings with a cold proc that reduces enemy damage, as well as offering up to 14% total speed and a lot of offensive ability. The second best option would be a Band of the Eternal Haunt and a Ring of Anubar or Reign of Ice and Fire. You could also use the Wrath of Alchemist set if you have the blue rings instead, though obviously all of these options are inferior to the Dread Sigils. Continuing with the jewelry, we're using a Conduit of Wild Whispers. This is a crafted amulet which is going to cost a fortune to make. I've made four for, uh, conduits for various builds now, and they've all cost over 100 Ugden Blooms and several million iron bits to make. This is because they each have several versions, and the one we want will convert Primal Strike to Cold Damage. This item is a core part of the build, and it cannot be substituted. The build straight up doesn't work without it. Next up, we're using Serenity for the Relic. This one at least should be relatively easy to source, and we're mostly using it for the plus one to all skills, though the other stats and the circuit breaker as, are good as well. This build is very skill point starved, and more is better. You could use Nemesis here, but I would recommend against it. For our last accessory, we're using Ilgore's Eternal Vigil. You should get plenty of these while you're farming for your rings, and if you want to get affixes that give offensive ability, or of the Winter Storm for plus two Knight's Chill. Rhyme Frost, Glacial, Infiltrators, or Reapers are also acceptable prefixes. Moving on to the armor, let's start with the hardest piece, the Ravager's Dread Gaze. This item drops from one of the game's celestial bosses, the Ravager. That's the bad news, because even this finished build isn't going to be killing him on ultimate without a lot of luck. The good news is that you can farm him on elite to get it. The second bad news is that means you have to do almost the entire elite campaign, and you have to side with Barrowholm. If all of this sounds like a bit too much work, just use the ultimate Fett and Mask and accept that you're going to be a bit weaker. We're mostly here for the plus one to all skills on this helmet, the rest is just icing on the cake. It's really nice icing, but it's not required. For the chest, I've got the mythical Frost Dread Kuras which comes with flat cold damage, percent cold damage, and an aura that gives more flat and percent cold damage. It also has a chance to freeze anything that hits you. Kilrian's Flame is notable here, because it's used for the attack speed mostly, though we are converting both fire and vitality partially over to cold, 
so the proc is also okay. Uh, for pants, we are using Kubacabra's Chaucer's, which are used entirely for the plus three to lethal assault. Rhyme Frost is a good prefix, but as above with the metal, all of those other prefixes would be fine as well. Ideally, you want either Offensive Ability or Of the Winter Storm for the suffix. These just happen to be the first cold pants that he dropped for me. Note also that Kubacabra is highly resistant to cold. Shoulders are the Mythical Chill Dread Mantle for flat and percent cold damage, as well as plus 3 to Knight's Chill, and a cold damage proc that triggers when hit and freezes enemies. Great health, good offensive ability, and good resistances round out this really nice item. You could substitute the epic Chilmain Mantle or Musiloki or Logorian's shoulders in a pinch. Gloves are the Mythical Ice Scorn Talons. Frostburn damage, percent cold damage, offensive ability, levels in lethal assault, but most importantly, that massive pile of attack speed. You could substitute Morganeth's Grip, and that would be okay, but losing that attack speed is going to hurt. Boots are the Mythical Amatox Step for cold damage, good resistance, and the same proc as on the shoulders. Freezing things when you get hit is a nice defensive layer. Morganeth's Step would be an okay substitution here. Last up is the Belt, and as with the other rare items in the build, we want to get offensive ability on the affixes here. I had this one in the stash from an earlier Spellbreaker build, so mine has Dreadlords as a prefix, but the usual list of good affixes apply here as well. Note that this belt gives plus one to all Nightblaze skills, and converts between 40 and 60% vitality damage to cold. Try to get a good roll on that percentage, but don't stress too much about it. The final items are the weapons. We're using Stormrend in the main hand, and this is the other core item that the build doesn't work without. This weapon lets us use Primal Strike, a skill that normally requires a two-hander, but with one-handed weapons. Stormrend is a semi-rare item that can technically drop anywhere, but has a much higher drop rate from Ethereal Totems. Our offhand weapon is Chillheart, and this is the easiest item to get in the build. For this item, you have to go to the Vanguard of the Three, and stand in the green goop in the bottom corner of the area until this dagger appears. You only get one of these per character, so go get a couple with your other level 100 builds and use the best one. This provides both fire and lightning conversion to cold, as well as base cold damage on the weapon to reduce the physical to lightning conversion we have. It also has up to 19% attack speed, which this build sorely needs. Next up is the skills of the build. Starting with Nightblade, we are using Dual Blades to enable us to dual wield, as well as for physical resistance and flat piercing damage, which our rings are partially converting to cold. We have Amaraster's Blade Burst with a maxed out lethal assault, or at least as close as you can get to it, to provide large amounts of flat and percentage cold damage, as well as chance to freeze things we hit. Pneumatic Burst and its line gives us a healing proc, chance to avoid, offensive ability, defensive ability, as well as total speed, and some resistances. Veil of Shadow helps by debuffing enemies, and the Knight's Chill node over here reduces enemy resistance to cold. Blade Barrier is a nice reset button on a fight, allowing you to heal to full while you can't be attacked, and the bottom row of passives gives us armor, resistances, percent damage to humans, percent cunning, and some cold damage. In the Shaman Tree, we're taking Primal Strike for our main attack, and it's worth putting as many points into this line as you can. We are fully converting Primal Strike and Storm Surge to Cold, and we are partially converting Torrent. Stormcaller's Pact is our exclusive skill and provides some crit damage as well as some damage over time and flat lightning that we are converting to Frostburn and Cold. The Wind Devils provide a really nice Devotion procker, as well as Shredding Resistances to Elemental, and Mugdrogan's Pact line down here gives us more armor, health regeneration, percentage health, resistances, and flat physical damage. Lastly, we will cover Devotions. This page in particular comes from GrimTools.com on their calculator, and I will include a link to the GrimTools page in question. When you go to the Devotion page here, you will have this slider down the bottom, and this will show you the progress for how I got to the final Devotions. This particular page is not very tricky. We won't be respecking large amounts of points, just the four nodes in the middle. And uh, here we go. First up, we take the tortoise. 
Then we put a point in red and we take the Jackal and the Viper. The last node in the Viper there provides us with Elemental Resistance Shred for anything we hit with weapon damage. After that we take points in the green cross nodes and we take the Spider, the Raven, the Fox. These are mostly for the green points that we need, but also they give large amounts of offensive ability and attack speed. The Fox also gives some lifesteal. Next we put a point in purple and we take the Empty Throne, followed by the Rowan's Crown. The proc in the Rowan's Crown provides us with some elemental resistance shred. Then we take Murmur. This is for cold resistance shred. After that, we put two points in Berserker just for that little bit of extra physical resistance. And so we don't have two points just kind of hanging around at the end. After that, we put a full seven points into Amatok at the top of the screen there. This gives us the Blizzard proc as well as a whole bunch of generic cold stuff. Then we take our four points out of the crossroads and we put them all into Yugol over here, Yugol the Insatiable Knight. This one, we are here for the pet. The Black Blood of Yugal. This provides a debuff to enemies' damage and movement speed while they are standing in it. And that's the devotions. Finally, to show the build's performance, this is a run I did of Shattered Realm 80. While I normally do speed these up to save time, this one is fast enough that I'm going to run it at normal speed. This is a four minute run where I easily clear all the bosses and nemesis I run into, including Archmage Alexander, Benjar the Colossal, and Iron Maiden. This is my usual standard for a build to be considered good, and this build walks through Shattered Realm 80 like it owns the place. This meme build is officially good. I'm gonna let this run now, and I'll see you at the end of it. Timestamps are in the description if you wish to skip forwards.
That was a 4 minute Shattered Realm 80 run with Archmage Alexander, Benjar the Colossal, and Iron Maiden. All of them face tanked, except for Alexander's Meteor because this is hardcore and I'm more scared than I am lazy. On other runs I have also face tanked Xantaran, Reaper of the Lost, and Kaisan. All this was done with a few underleveled devotions as well, so if you can believe it, this build actually gets better. This build is a really good Shattered Realm farmer, and will handle anything that isn't a Celestial fairly handily. For a build that started out as a meme, it's really good. The only shame is that this is not a beginner build and I can't recommend it as a first character. The damage is very nice, the defenses are good enough, and clear speed is great too. If you've got this far into the video, then I'd just like to thank you for watching, and ask that you like the video if you've enjoyed it or found it helpful. Stay tuned for more Grim Dawn content, but this is going to be the end of this video and build guide, so thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.